writing and to explore ideas, particularly in an international context. So in all of your countries, right, you'll have left-wing and right-wing parties, or parties that call themselves left-wing and right-wing. Yeah? Uh, sometimes what's left-wing in one country and right-wing in another country, uh, or left-wing in another country, are totally different. So we need to look at those terms and some of the ideas within them. Um, so, let's, let's go straight into it. Debates often talk about liberal democracies or Western liberal democracies. Anyone heard that phrase before in the debate? We're going to set this in Western liberal democracies. Okay. What is a Western liberal democracy? Who's in the club and why? Name, name your countries in Western liberal democracies. I'm going to start. Slovenia. In or out? In. Why? Why in? Liberal system. Why out? Social system. Socialist system. Wow. No, okay. social. Oh, social system. <coughs> so you think it's not a, not a liberal democracy? Fine, good, we'll come back to this. Um, the United States of America. Yes. Yeah. You're supposed to yee-haw or something. yee Thank you. <laughs> uh, in or out? In. Anyone have them out? Not Western. Not liberal. Keep that present by friendly judge. No? Fine, okay. <laughs> so they're in, in the club. Okay. Great Britain. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone want them out? They're wanting them out and having them out. Yeah, okay. Um, Japan. In. Out. Oh, in. Why in? They're not Western enough. <laughs> okay. What's Western? How do you define Western? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, let me try and settle this. Generally, in the debating world, this mad, imaginary world that we live in, when people say Western liberal democracies, it's generally assumed that they do include all of the countries that we're talking about. Because by liberal, they don't mean, depending on what your country is, really left wing or maybe really right wing, uh, depending on your country. Um, and by Western, they don't mean in the Western Hemisphere. In fact, the term Western is not very helpful. Um, generally, people do include Australia. Um, generally, people do include Japan. Uh, generally, they don't include some other countries. Let's go down to the other end of the list and think of countries who definitely don't belong in Western liberal democracies that we're talking about. See if we can agree on those. Hmm? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Okay. Uh, USA is 52nd state. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they probably they probably don't count. Uh, why not? Right, okay. Um, anything else about their system which makes them in another category? It's not Okay. Islamic countries. Islamic countries. all Islamic countries, not democracies. <coughs> Turkey. Turkey is dem a democracy, so being Islamic wasn't isn't too helpful. But it's a kingdom; it's not democratic. Okay, uh, so is half of Europe. But that's, yeah, absolutely. But with European countries, even though you have a kingdom, you still have democracy. Good. Okay. Probably some things about massive human rights abuses that you generally throw in there too. Uh, any other countries that are definitely not Western liberal democracies? What about Cuba? Is Cuba a Western liberal democracy? No. It's in no. the West. It's. it's do you think it's a dictator? Okay. Anyone disagree? Yeah. Well, uh, actually, I would come up with the case of Venezuela, and the thing is that what really, really bugs me is that I think that most of the people believe that a democracy is a system where people vote, where people vote in Cuba, you know, but it's not liberal democracy, nothing, and that that's, that comes with a with a you know with a possibility of transfer, transfer, uh, transferring the power with the independence of the public powers and blah, 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 blah. it's not just voting. Good. This is really helpful stuff. So what other, what other kind of things is it then? In not the, just independence of the powers. Uh, uh, Which powers? Well, the public powers like, uh, like the legislative and the judicial powers in the, being independent from the executive power. I just want to check everyone's with this. They probably are, but I want to check. Checks and balances. Oh, checks and balances is just, I mean, if you're studying American theory, then yeah, checks and balances. Not all of, not, not all systems do have divisions of powers that are strict. 
there's certainly some kind of understanding of division and independence, some sort of independence of the parliament, right? The executive that actually carries out uh, carries out law and has sometimes some discretion, and um, the judiciary. I'm sure if you talk to Americans, we had it for three hours rather than one, they would suggest that there perhaps isn't a lot of independence in some parts, and there's been a lot of you know, contamination over recent years. So we have to be careful not to just sloganise. Um, but yeah, these kind of things are important. What about the ability to own private property? Yeah. Is that important? Yeah. Why? Because that's the only way in, in which you can say that it's liberal. Sorry. I'm always with this Thank you. Okay. And that would leave. That would mean that the individual doesn't have the right. Yeah, but does it resolve by default assume that each individual has a certain amount of rights that you know, by default he has and cannot be changed? Anyway, I, I, I think it's time to start agreeing with things. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm going to stop throwing that over to you. Yes, it does. The term liberal as used in the world of writing doesn't have the kind of specific connotations that it has in particular countries. It generally refers to a system based on presumption of the individuality of people and that these people hold a set of rights, um, some of which are absolute rights that can never be taken away under any circumstances. Um, some of those are arguable, like you have the death penalty in America, um, you know, and Russia. Um, I'm trying to think of another country that could call itself Western that had it, but I can't think of any right now. Um, torture, again, you know, that's coming up more and more. But this is some of the assumptions that we're making. And also some rights which aren't absolute. They're kind of restricted rights. They're rights that you have that are in conflict with each other, like privacy and freedom of speech, yeah? family life. Um, you know, right to work, potentially, depending on where you look. So, th th this, these are some of the assumptions that we have. We also have assumptions about democracy, and the point uh, that you were making about, not just about voting, is really important. What other kinds of things make a democracy in the way that we talk about it in debating? That aren't just voting. Let's start. Free press, or relatively free press. Well, you should be making this list for me. Freedom of speech, or at least almost freedom of speech, right? It's a question of degree with all of these. What else? How about more than one political party? Important? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You could theoretically, without it being someone's fault, end up with one party as a constant. <coughs> And that would not necessarily not make it a democracy, although it's hard to believe. Uh, if this were a political theory class, I yeah. would go, that's a really interesting perspective. World of debating, no, yeah. World of debating yeah. that is not a shared assumption. A shared assumption, that's what I can say. Yeah, Yeah. in Georgia they had elections and they party win the elections with 76%, and they just banned other countries because they had two-thirds majority in the parliament. Wow. That's so it was a democratic election, yeah. they democratically mm -hmm. ruled out the other country. In Egypt they had elections in the 90s and they, they elected a, a party committed to creating a one-party Islamic state and abolishing elections. And the losing side, who had the army on their side, said that's not democratic because you're getting rid of the elections. And they said it is democratic because we won the election. That's kind of difficult to resolve, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's a sort of uh, theoretical problem. Um, that was won by the army. Yep. Yeah, cool. that's kind of the problem that we're having in Venezuela. That, they, that he's wanted, want, he wants to have an election where they're going to pass a constitutional amendment, and the constitutional amendment establishes uh, like the losing of you know absolute rights in, in certain exceptional states and stuff like that. So the changes that are being ma uh, made are undemocratic, but you know he wants to pass it through that democratic uh, way, which is the voting. So, yeah. can you can you can you ensure and uh, can you ensure the rights that maybe people don't want to have? Mm -hmm. I mean, let's look at Iraq. Iraq, under Saddam Hussein, had elections, elections for president, elections for all sorts of local uh, levels of government, 
it had referendums on things. Um, was it a liberal democracy? No, no, not in a million years. Uh, Soviet Union had elections. And it was Pakistan. Just, sorry? And Pakistan. Pakistan. Yeah, we, we, we wait to see what the elections on uh, January the 9th, I think it's going to be, yeah. will be like. And who will be, who'll be in them? The opposition says it won't be in the elections. Really difficult. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, what do we call non-democracies? In, in debate world, you often hear, I mean, keep banging on this, but dictators are bad people who like violating human rights and eat for breakfast. In dictator world, and all dictatorships are always the same in the mouths of debaters. Have you noticed that? You know, it's sort of, yeah, this bad man who's in charge of everything. Nothing happens without him knowing. You imagine this man with a brain the size of a room and eyes everywhere. Um, so many countries are just incredibly different. Is Pakistan the same as Iran, the same as Iraq, the same as, you know, Malaysia, the same as South Africa, the same as Britain? No, we're all different individual countries. Um, so what kind of ways can we describe different kind of political systems in the world? Are there any communist countries left, do you think? No. You think China? Cuba. It's not really communist. Not really communist. Tell me about that. Well, China calls itself communist, no, but it's not yeah, capitalist. Yeah, it's it's capitalist in the sense where it's, handy, it's privatizing a lot of um, areas, and it's, it's basically a business kind of like it's business is that thriving, right? Because right. of privatization. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it has media. It's, it's controlled by them, but they still they're being more and more flexible. Mm -hmm. So it seems like they're heading away from that. Okay, capitalism and communism basically is all about who owns stuff. Uh, if, if individuals and companies own stuff, that's more capitalist. If the state owns and controls stuff, that's more communist. The confusing thing about the world is, it was compared to 100 years ago, where, I don't know, in 1900, Britain, 7% of the national wealth was taxed and spent by the government. In capitalist Britain, something like 45% of the, the wealth of the country is taxed and spent in Britain. Um, and in other countries, you know, France is about 50%, even in America it's somewhere, depending on how you count it, it's 35 to 40%. Um, so, capitalist countries are a bit capitalist, you know, and we, that's how we describe them in the world of debating. It's very complicated because we've grown in such a way, all of the countries of the world, uh, at least the ones that have any kind of government, where taxes are really, and spending are a really important feature of them, even though they keep the same name, like liberal or capitalist society. So I suppose the overview for this is these terms are fraught with difficulties. Use them carefully. Be clear about what you're saying and don't rely on the label. Don't get yourself into a debate where you go, yeah, but that's because that's just a communist country and therefore, you know, they're all green and live underground or something. You can't label your way out of a debate. Be subtle about this. Okay, is there such a thing as a social contract? Next question. Sorry. Pardon? Is there a social contract? All debaters tell me there's a social contract. <laughs> well, that doesn't make it true or untrue, does it? Um, Can you explain what you mean by social contract? Exactly. Exactly the question I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can someone try and explain it? Who, who uses the term? Who sometimes More says? like a symbolic expression to show white people, you know, live in a society in a common. Okay, so what is that explanation, this symbolic explanation? The difference between the social contract is when you vote someone. Because when you vote a government, when you empower a certain government, that's a not very specific, not very exact, contract, but it's a form of contract in which you give them power to act, to impose law in your name. Okay. I'll say one thing. We'll look at that, what you're saying. That's a very controversial definition of what the social contract is. Um, but let's look at it, um, and then we'll see if there are others. What about the majority of people in m most countries, apart from except Georgia, apparently, um, <laughs> the majority of people don't vote for the person who wins or the governing party? Children don't vote for them either. I mean, you, even the majority of the electorate, but you count everyone else. So, who do they have a social contract with? Don't, isn't the social contract sort of what the government has to its people? That it's sort of like there's certain things that it should defend and like sort of protect for its people, like, I don't know, certain rights that it's like the people expect the government to protect. 
and then if they don't, then they have the right to sort of be like, there's something wrong. And how is this manifested in the world? It's not, it's like an unwritten sort of understanding. How do, how do I know it exists? Because there's certain things that all... Because we're referring to it. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I mean, certainly the individual has certain obligations, like he needs to pay taxes and all that stuff that the state imposes on him. And if you go know, into, into the army, if it's required, and all the state has certain obligations towards him, like I mean, the, the national health system, uh, protection, the security, all that stuff. So it's kind of intertwined. Okay. So we don't know it exists. We just have to assume in order to explain certain things, but it's just that we. What other alternatives are there to explain? I mean, let's take his definition of people have duties, the state has duties, therefore there's a contract. Yeah. Well, not that much on, on, on that. Okay, let's see. Okay. So. Go. Uh, everything? Anything? Yeah, be, be quick. Yeah, and, yeah, because I, I understand that the, the definition of social contract is broad, and it would end up being like, what does the people really, really do? Independently of the on the on the on the formal norm, uh, normative that established that so you could say like in Italy there are you know signs and street lights and stuff but the social contract is that you do not necessarily have to drive attending to them you know so that that's like okay. how, how does the people really understand it it's like what the social contract would end up being so we've got another new definition of the social contract. While I don't have enough time to go into this in the depth that I'd be interested to do, can we already see that people are using the same term to mean many, many different things? And that therefore, again, if you're going to use it in debating, you need to be able to answer the very simple question I asked you, which is also a very difficult question. What is the social contract? Because it doesn't matter what Rousseau thought, or John Rawls thinks, or thought now, uh, or you know, what anyone else thought. It matters what you're saying it is, because that's the only information that the adjudicator is going to go on. Yeah. So actually, it's quite okay if you say, if you give some very self-serving definition. Well, it's okay, I guess, but I mean, it's not going to. It's just a label. Yeah. It's not okay if it's self-serving in the in the debate. What you're actually describing doesn't do doesn't win the debate. Um, if you're relying on the existence of a social contract to say that people should give up their limbs for medical research, because just as the state has duties to us, so we have duties to the state. And we say that one of those duties is to give up your limbs for medical research. You, that might be self-serving and clever, but it's not in the debate. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really the argument that stands or falls, not the label. And that's the, one of the things you need to be careful about doing. The, 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 there's going to be an idea more of a reciprocity of particular um, duties, and it's not clear. It's not. It's not just a thing that everyone knows is true. The social contract. I don't know how it's coming to debating because it's a very contentious theory. Um, there are other theories of legitimacy, um, and you should be aware of that. Basically, that's my little thing on that. Over. Let's do left and right wing. Write things on the board. Um, <laughs> that's going to be fun. Left wing over here. Uh, we can have some fun with this. Uh, right wing over here. Okay, give me some words to write up. Anything you like. Social state. Where, where am I putting social state? Left. That's a nice German term. Social state. The middle D. What does social state mean? The state provides the minimum standard for a person who can provide The answer was, for you guys, at the sense that the um, State provides the minimum for yeah. for those who can provide it for themselves. Isn't it some? Is it something more than that? Yeah, I'd like to say it. Uh, I think that's a theory that in mainstream politics kind of goes all around. Do, do no we, one. Do right wingers think that people should starve in the streets? No. Pardon? No. Pardon? Do do people on the right wing think that people should starve in the streets? No, they think no. they should take care of themselves. Yeah. Do they? Yes, I think that people from the right wing thinks that through economical efficiency you avoid people from being starving in the streets because they they'll go inside a you know a, a job they'll find a job. But in the left side, they believe that there's a paper that the, the, the state has something to do on redistributing the wealth. 
okay. which may go against gotcha. the efficiency. But okay, gotcha. Sorry to crash, but we need we need to look for okay. it and keep it short. Right. Um, do still doesn't ask the question. You're sort of assuming that they'll get jobs. Do right wingers actually do right wing? Who are these right wing countries anyway? Who's a right wing country? Do you think? Slovenia. Yeah. Slovenia. In Slovenia, if people are so poor that they can't get a job and can't uh, feed well, themselves, are they allowed to die on the streets, or is something done? Does the government you, do something? You, you can't say that Slovenia's land is right wing because all the parties have it in yeah. the first sentence. Sentence that they are social parties. So uh, <laughs> they also are social. Can someone give me a party in the world that answers my question? Okay. The Republicans. Okay. There's not. There is uh, in the Western world, especially, it's perceived that conservative parties are uh, well, like right wing parties, and the conservative parties based nothing on. Uh, on Forgive me if he isn't going to answer my question. Yes, no, I'm, I'm okay. saying that right wing parties, as they're perceived in the Western world, do. Uh, hold that kind of policy, and only libertarian or classical liberal parties, which are very small in the world, hey. actually say that you shouldn't have social security. You from America? <coughs> Republicans would say, if you starve to death in the street, it's your fault. But would yeah. they say it like on the TV? Like they no. say they they would say that in Black America we have people. equal opportunities, and everyone has the equal opportunity to succeed. And if you don't succeed. It's probably something that you've done wrong. That would be a Republican view. So where are we writing America on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, um, let's, let's get, I think that's good we, Let's get some more words up. What about, what's a welfare state? That phrase is used in debating, particularly by Britain and... Uh, England. England? Yeah, or well, Britain, more oh, precisely. Right. But that's fine, no, all of, yeah. It's all one welfare system. Canada, yeah. Uh, I'm going to write welfare state instead. Welfare state refers to more services as well. And things like pensions being provided by the state through, na through national social insurance, national insurance. Things like a health service that is free uh, to use, uh, or nearly free to use. Um, things like schools being free. Things like social services being free to take, you know, coming and taking children away from their parents or looking after them, things like that. So then where would some place that the states fit on? Because it does have some of those aspects. Mm -hmm. And it also, but it also has some of the right aspects as well. Yeah. So is it just sort of like in the middle? You tell me. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of right on some things, middle on other things, and yeah. arguably left on some things too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it left, right, middle? I don't know. Well, Let's say, culturally, okay, um, forgive, how many people here would describe themselves as being from Eastern Europe? Okay, would it be fair to say that public opinion of, for example, black people in your countries, if you walk down the street with a black person, would be that you would get comments and things like that happening? Would you expect that to happen, or would people just look away? Fair, fair, fair point. Yep. Um, not no judgment on those countries, but cultural norms. If you go go to you know if you look at American legislation on things like race issues and how far they try to go compared to other countries, they are to the left of countries that are really trying to get into the EU, which is perceived as being really left wing in America because it's got a social state. And you have this sort of like one of those staircases you can draw that just keeps going up. Yeah, you just keep shifting the issue, and everyone's to the left of you on something, or to the right of you on something. So the, I suppose this is what this is trying to show, that this is an inadequate way of seeing the world. But let's keep trying to do it anyway, it's fun. More words. <laughs> Redistribution of the world. Redistribution, where does that go? Right. Huh? On the right. right. No, not left. Right. Redistribution to the rich. <laughs> That's how you're thinking. <laughs> Yeah. Redistribution. Oh, right. Redistribution of wealth. That's okay. Oh, yeah, redistribution on the left. Okay, how do we do redistribution? How do governments do it? Tax. Oh, yeah. Tax. Tax. More. Tax. 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 Yeah. Okay. Can we put some things on the right? Tradition. Tradition. Yeah, they usually are more. Okay. And what sort of things come under this heading of tradition normally? The Roman Consul before 400 BC. Sorry? The Roman Consul before 400 BC. They support that? They were like tradition, like the plebeians would stay in Consul and they wouldn't let, like, the... the okay, uh, I'll, I'll say true. The reasoning about tradition. Uh, <laughs> like, for example, in Romania, the tradition being very leftish 
you don't have a traditional right in basically any way. So it's not that defining. You can be right without having tradition. Yeah. So what kind of things mean right when you remain there? Classic Hungarian? Classical liberals. Yeah? Basically. Right. So and they would be called liberals. And, li and liberals in Romania, I'm guessing, would be the most right wing party. It would be called socialists. Yeah. More like liberals. Or social democrats. Well, hold on. What you would call liberals in You Britain. just said liberals. No, 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 I didn't say what I would call liberals yes. in Britain. What you call liberals, where do they go on the, your political spectrum? Right. Um, right. right. Yes. Right. Same in Poland. Same in. Lots of countries, I think. Mm -hmm. Come on, tell me, is it true in your country? Yeah. yeah. Right. They tend to be free market, cut taxes. We want a flat tax. We want to have more business coming in. We want to take away regulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. or, or liberal, depending mm -hmm. on what you want to do. Okay, liberal. Yeah. Sorry. It's not the same same in Slovenia. Good. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Tell me about Slovenia. We have the left uh, wing. Liberal. Excellent. <laughs> um, in Britain. They're not even. Yeah, liberal Party or the Liberal Democrats mm -hmm. are the Centre Party. Mm -hmm. So we have Liberal now on the left, in the middle, and on the right. Yay! Isn't Liberal mean like free thinking? Well, it can do. It can mean lots of things. That's the problem. You can um, be thinking about the distribution of wealth. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll take you through the sort of journey that the word liberalism went on. But it, let's hear about America. What does the word liberal mean in America? It means you're, it, it depends on how it's, how it's used, but liberal has sort of been taken over as meaning you're anti-American and that you're probably a communist. <laughs> this is pretty much how it's deployed these days. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're in favor of rewarding lazy people for sitting around, eating chips, watching TV and having kids, and you don't like the value of a hard day's work, and you probably believe that we should drop our borders and things like that. Yeah, if, if, if they ask Hillary That's the Trump, general... She liberal, she just goes around it. Oh, I'm yeah. progressive. Well, that's because in 1988, <laughs> it essentially turned around a 25 point lead that Michael Dukakis had over Bush mm -hmm. um, by using race, a racist slur on that one great too yeah. and calling him liberal over and over and over again. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And uh, ever since, everyone's been terrified of the word. Yeah. Um, right, I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm looking at time. Mm -hmm. Right. What does this show us? Everyone wants to be liberal. Right. <laughs> so the term liberal democracy, the term liberal democracy does refer broadly to a set of systems that people would generally agree who's in and who's out. That does not mean that the term liberal necessarily refers to liberal democracies. It depends how you're using the word, and so you have to be specific about how you're using the word. The word liberal used to mean, when it first came up, I suppose, um, used to refer very much to the sort of system of England in the time of the Industrial Revolution. It was a laissez-faire uh, idea that people are individuals, you should leave them alone to run their own affairs, you shouldn't have the aristocracy bossing them about, you should let them own property, you shouldn't tax them, and they will generate wealth for the country, they will employ people. If you want to pay someone 2p a day, and they will accept 2p a day because they're poor, they've got 2p a day more, and that's great. And if that means they're prepared to go up chimneys and like, do whatever, that's, that's absolutely fine, because if they didn't want to do it, they don't have to. We're a free society. So to start with the idea that society would be better with this kind of negative conception of rights, okay? And when liberal parties moved, um, particularly around from 1900 onwards, um, as they moved to what was called new liberalism, is now just a big mess of which one you are, but that broadly said, actually we've noticed something, and that's that people are supposed to have the ability to sort of pursue happiness in their own way, but actually there are things stopping them, like the fact that they're only worth 2p a day. Um, and if they really want to be free, they probably need things like an education. And they probably need not to have to do a job that involves them only living to the age of 35, because it's so dangerous. And they, and they probably need these things to have a, what we really mean by a human life. And so therefore they said, well actually the state should start doing these things, because how else are we going to get them? So we need free schools, and we need some, you know, we need health care. And so, what liberals keep is the idea that it's individuals being able to do things with their lives that's important, and what they've changed, in many cases, is the conditions that they think are necessary for that to happen. And the kind of people who call themselves liberals in Eastern Europe, uh, in parts of Eastern Europe, I should be more precise, um, are the sort of people who go back to the sort of 19th century idea of liberalism. 
you know, that, that problem is that we're a big bureaucracy, that our state's corrupt. We need to start again, free everything up, let people make money, get capital in, then we can worry about taxing it. Is yeah. it fair to call that classic liberalism? Or is I would argue it is, but I don't think many people would know what that meant until mm -hmm. you talked about that. Some people would, but you, you just you actually need to explain what you mean. That's the whole point. The label doesn't do it for you. Kind of, it, it, it kind of. You say classical liberalism, and by that we mean the ideas of X, Y, Z. Very briefly, great. People would love that. What, where are we conservatives the last time? To the right. Okay. Let's put them on. They would in Britain, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but what do you mean by right? I mean, if liberal. What's conservatism that's not free markets? Mm -hmm. How's it different? Isn't it more like closed borders, more like free market, but within your own country kind of idea? More the idea of the nation mm -hmm. being important, yeah. nationality mm -hmm. being really key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Generally, that is true. I think across countries, everyone will argue. Yeah. Okay. What other things in conservatism? Control to religion, importance of the church. In many countries, not in Britain, actually, but in many, many countries, absolutely. So I'm showing you a, 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 a counter example, if you like. What about social attitudes? Do conservatives like things like uh, gay people having equal rights? Mm -hmm. On the whole, no. Yeah. They're like traditionally more mm -hmm. Generally true. Again, in Britain, it's changed. The Conservative Party says, yeah, we don't mind at all, uh, although secretly most of them do. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I was going to say that. Uh, the point about the um, conservative being free market loving, that's, that doesn't go around the river. Because, for instance, in Romania, and I think it's around most parts of Eastern Europe, conservatives or people that we label as conservatives are kind of the same as Western conservatives on social issues, but they're also kind of socialists. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. national socialists, nationalist Careful. socialists. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I see what you're getting at. In Germany, the so called you know, conservative, the Christian Democrats, if you like, that what they're conserving is a, a system which has lots and lots of state protection, right? Mm -hmm. They're not saying rip up and start again with the new German constitution. So it is a very difficult term. In Russia, in the Soviet Union rather, the people who wanted to keep the Soviet Union together and communism going were labelled by the press the conservatives. Um, and actually the conservatives in our part, in our country, complained to the BBC <laughs> that they were using the term conservative to describe hardline Soviets, <laughs> which is very funny. Mm -hmm. um, their, their complaint was rejected. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, so that's what we've got on that. So we've kind of got liberals having changed. Now, one principle I want to talk about last is the idea that within a liberal society, what that means, we have this harm to others principle, this harm principle that John Stuart Mill, God bless him, made famous uh, in, on liberty in the 1870s. And the idea there is that the only thing which we should say is good is something that fulfills this principle. This is a debate idea, not a real world idea. If I said to you in a debate, I'm sorry, I don't like your harm principle, my God says that this is right, and you just can't convince me otherwise, that doesn't get anywhere in the debate, does it? It doesn't mean that you're wrong. You may, you may be that your religion is absolutely right and the rest of us are going to hell. Um, but you can't appeal to God. If you were to appeal and say, um, most people want this thing and therefore we should do it, how far does that get you in the debate? Yeah, in real life, massively powerful argument. Within debating, because we need to have some sort of structure to it, and because we're pretending to be a parliament, it's sort of implicit that whoever wins the debate gets to pass the law, right? So, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not a killer argument. Can we think of other conceptions of the good, then, that aren't God and aren't democracy, I suppose, that we can appeal to against just a harm principle? Yeah? Some better for the Better for the development of the human society. Like How better though? As in, it will progress the development of the human society either by um, keeping like the current conditions from falling or by increasing the current conditions. What does that? Does that mean money? Like whatever you're debating about, it could be like technological. It could be welfare. It could be money. It could be morals. Okay. Let's look, at, let's look at the juxtaposition. Let me set this up better. 
The harm principle is essentially that if um, something causes no harm to others, okay, that we should be free to do it. It's not like, often made in things like about liberation debates, like prostitution or drugs or... And then there are arguments about whether there are harm to others, but the principle that people appeal to, the, the classic liberal position, is that if we can't really demonstrate harm to others, who is anyone to stop me? Or who is anyone to stop you? We might, not, we might think you're crazy for wanting to wear your bizarre religious things and do your practices, but who are we to stop you? Or, or vice versa, you know? That you have to live with my crazy atheism or whatever. You know, that's, that's, that's the kind of position. So what else can we appeal to to reject that? Can we reject that position? Can we say even if it causes no harm to anyone else, it's still wrong and should still be illegal? It's hard to define what harms the others. Yeah, can you okay, that's not my question, with respect. It's a very good, yeah, that's good to get into that, yeah. But can you actually just beat it with something else? Can you appeal to another principle? Sure. Yeah. Sorry, you, you, could say, you could say that, uh, or you could say that, well, it's proven that, well, a lot of people are bothered by that, be it being not distinguishable as, as a clear harm, but they're bothered by that, therefore it's reasonable by a democratic theory of majority, mm -hmm. that, well, that, that kind of thing has to be ruled out in order to maintain the order of society and the general wall-offness of... But then you say the order is hard, so... People are really offended. Yeah. Then there's the majority the really wrong. that people don't know what is best for them. The yeah. state knows better. Okay. So people don't know that marijuana harms them, so state is allowed to, pro to uh, prohibit smoking marijuana. Because of harm. You're still appealing to the same principle, the harm principle. Yes. Can you use the humanitarian? Like, mm -hmm. what, what do you mean? Like, you know, when pe people say that religion or no religion, there's still a moral code which humanitarians follow. Okay. Can you use their principles? You could do, I guess, if you could prove that. That's quite a big thing to prove. Um, and would something like we shouldn't allow gay people to adopt because humanitarian principles suggest that a mother and a father is best for a child. I'm just trying to think of an application of it. Um, is that the kind of thing you have in mind? No. Oh, okay. Um, what about justice? Well, doesn't that, doesn't that sometimes um, clash with the idea that everyone should just be able to do whatever they want as long as it doesn't harm anyone else? I mean, if I'm obscenely rich, I say obscenely rich in an attempt to frame this, obviously. If I'm very rich, um, I have a billion pounds because, I don't know, I, I refuse to sell AIDS drugs to the third world so I could make a big profit on it in the first world. Um, you know, something like that. Um, and I say, well, look, how I spend my money is only my business. Once I've paid my basic taxes to cover things, um, how, did, how does the harm principle say that I should really like, contribute anything to anyone? Yeah. But you're harming the third world country that you're not selling the drugs to, and you're harming the people of your own country by having so much money. Okay, if you, under <laughs> if you, understand, if you understand the harm principle to mean whenever you spend your money and don't give it to the third world, you are breaking the law, then our country would be very different. That's not how we mean the harm principle. The harm principle is actually... It's, not, it's, 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 um, it's more than just opportunity cost. It's actually doing something that physically or mentally really don't, or, or their rights are taken away. Now, if you can demonstrate a rights claim, if you can demonstrate that everyone in every country has a right to something, then you might have a claim to say, my right to my money is not as big. And that's one area. There's one you've picked out, I guess, rights. Rights are areas where you might, it's not the harm principle, or where the harm principle might be outweighed, because some... You use indirect harms? Uh, indirect harms. Well, you're saying it doesn't fall under harm principles. Yeah, I But am. someone's still being harmed. But you have a right independent of the fact of who's causing you harm or not causing you harm. If you believe in rights, and if you're arguing for rights, that's just an independent thing that you're arguing. The harm principle has no place in assessing whether you have a right or not. Yeah. Well, you could base your, you could base on the theory of which you have more of a right if you have more of a need. That's basically what the social security system and everything like that 
kind of base it itself on. That the people who have more of a need, mm -hmm. somehow objectively uh, drawn out, they have more of a right to something. So that that person doesn't have as much as a need as the world, world and he's dependable yeah. from that point of view, because he has less of a right. Okay, the position you're getting into is, I think, if I buy a car, that's as bad as taking food from someone who's starving. There is no distinction between an act and an omission. Because that person has a claim on me, personally, to for that money. Yeah. Well, actually, the, the, there was this St. Thomas theory about that you own things because you have the right to, admi to administrate them, but if the society doesn't provide the thing, uh, enough things to the people, uh, to some of the people, well, they are in, the in their legitimate right to rob you. Because society is fair, should first be aware on providing the minimum amount of things to people. And that was like St. Thomas, the, mm -hmm. like one of the main thinkers. Fantastic contribution, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll say it's true or untrue, I'm just saying, what a great thought. It's not the harm principle, and it's not an appeal to the harm principle, it's another principle. The idea that no one should have, whatever this minimum is that we're describing, talking about 20 minutes ago, Everyone deserves that. Everyone should just get it. It's not very high, perhaps. Maybe it's just a, you know, a bowl of soup and a roof or something over your head. But if people have a right to that, then where does that come from? Um, and who has to? Who do they have that right against? Who can they claim it from? And um, where does that duty from me lead in terms of my responses to that? So it's not just harm. Yeah. I think basically everything from whoever is making the money mm -hmm. often is doing the work. Sorry, tell again. So often they can demand their minimum level from whoever is doing the work and producing something one way or another. Okay. That's where it comes from and that's how it could without direct harm okay. identified. Yes, but directly they're asking it from the state. Alright, we're, we're teasing these issues out. What about nationalism? Does, does the nation have a special place in our hearts? No, no, no. I was quite shy. I'm in the wrong part of the world for this question. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Um, can we appeal to nationalism or to the nation as some independent entity with independent rights or independent sense of something in a debate. As opposed to what? Art. As opposed to bunches of people getting together, yeah, individuals just out there with their harm principle <laughs> in a globalizing world. Then we could, yeah. How, what is that? What is the nature of that? That like, the nation has a certain right like, to be protected from other nations and whatnot. Like, it's almost like a group of people, but it's like bigger than a group of people because it holds more things. Who believes nations have a right to self-determination? One, two, three. Who believes nations don't have a right to self-determination? No one. Some of you are just not here. <laughs> okay. um, the rights to, um, that if they want to uh, have their own state and determine their own affairs. Pardon? Have their own state and organize their own affairs. Do you mean like states are already existing, or do you mean pieces that want to break off, like the East Timor cases? I guess if they want to break off. I mean, just what I say, yeah. nations, if I you can identify nations. Nation, nation, yeah. well, I understand my nation is uh, the, whole com the whole complex of uh, the past, the generations, the present, and the future. Mm -hmm. And that's not really tangible, but still, I, 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 for example, believe that people have, I mean, uh, that people have, has, um, right. Is it like a sports club though? Is it just sort of, I quite fancy having a low tax, socially liberal country. Who's in? Yeah, <laughs> let's get some land. Or is it something no, a bit more on, genetic? Um, history, cultural, uh, do these things have actual value? I think people in the real world think they do, right? That history, culture, language mean something. They, when we walk around here meeting people, how many of you have not asked anyone where they're from? We kind of need to know, to, we think it tells us something about it. We might be wrong, but we're interested. So to pretend that you can have debates 
only on a harm principle, when in our real lives, I ask you about self-determination, there's no one who says you probably shouldn't have it. These things probably do matter. And when you put a slogan on it, like protection of minority rights, culture, language, identity, it sounds good, but actually it's not good. it's nationalism, it's saying that the nation has some special place uh, that we ought to protect in some way. And that's a competing principle, yeah, in these debates. And it's a perfectly acceptable one. Why don't you explain it one? You don't just go, sorry, we're this race, so you die. Um, that probably won't convince <laughs> many people. Anyway. Um, right, last, so la last, last little summary. Um, and then if anyone wants to stay and chat, that's fine, but I uh, realise it's getting late. Um, number one, number one tip. Um, the fact that something is in your constitution looking at no one in particular. There's, you didn't do it, but this is, this is, this is aimed at you. I feel a special part of it in my heart. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> does not prove that it should happen. It is implicit in the activity that the law can be changed when we have a debate in British parliamentary style. If what? that is what you are seeking to do. Popularity, uh, equally, does not prove the case for a proposal. Um, so that's the second one. Uh, yeah. However, you can invoke existing law as... I mean, it's okay to invoke existing law as... Look, uh, the current view of this is according to this current law. Yes, yeah, so if you're trying to build a weight of evidence to say this is consistent with a whole number of other things that happen in the world, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a fair point. So does the Constitution hold true in that case because it's... Or is it just because it's the Constitution? It's useful insofar as this right has been enshrined in our practices, in our culture, for 200 and something years. Um, it's got to be something really important to give it away. It's raising the burden, but essentially it doesn't win you any points. Okay. Yeah. Um, fair? Sort of a weight thing. Okay, number three. Uh, independent appeals to the rightness are required. Right, my little sentence. Um, you need to say why something is right and where, where your idea of right comes from. Yeah? Sorry? Rightness. Yeah, the rightness or wrongness of something. And where that, where that rightness comes from. Is it, is, it, is, does, is it because the nation has value? Is it because we should believe in utilitarianism where the effects are all that matters? Is it because we have a conception of justice? Does that come from God? Does it come from somewhere else? These are big questions. Okay, lastly, it's good for speakers to give a theoretical basis for their statements, explaining whether they accept or reject those of others in the realm. Let me explain what I mean by that. The propositions say, Mr. Speaker, we're just utilitarian. We don't care that we're going to have to kill people we think are terrorists anyway. Because we're going to save a million people because we know where the bomb is, they know where the bomb is, all that shit, all that shit. Okay, never happened in the real world, but you know, debate faces on it. Um, you don't have to accept their utilitarianism. You don't have to go, um, ah, but those people will have to live with themselves and the torturer will have to live with himself. You can argue that too, but that's you know, fair enough, engage with them, that's good. But you don't have to limit yourself to that. You can explicitly reject their principles and put up principles of your own, such as, we think that people have rights. We think that those rights come from X or Y. And we think that it's important not to lose them because of Z and A. And therefore, we think that this should happen. That's a good thing to do. It's a really good thing to do because it's exciting. Principles being discussed properly really, really great. Makes the debate so worthwhile and learning experience and wonderful. And it relates to the real world in an amazingly important way. So, we've learnt, number one, that life is confusing. Number two, <laughs> politics is confusing. And number three, don't just use labels in debate, analyse things. Number four, countries are all different. And what's left-wing in one country isn't necessarily left-wing in another country. And the same goes for right wing, and the same goes for centrist, and liberal, and socialist, and communist. I'm just trying to remember the people taking notes. Um, all of these words are, uh, are, are hugely contentious. And uh, that's it. If anyone wants to stay in chat and ask questions, you can. If you will go, it is time. Thank you.
I just said that off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Can you take notes for me?